space is the final frontier for a reason. It's a place that we've been to in certain ways, but haven't been able to explore and populate like we want to. We've been to the moon, multiple times in fact, and many people are trying to get us to Mars. But in the minds of NASA, the moon should still be the ultimate goal. They want us to not just go there, but colonize it and use it as a way of getting to the rest of the planets in our solar system and beyond. And with their Artemis program, they might just be able to do that. Allow us to show you Artemis 1 going back to the moon. State of the Artemis 1 Artemis 1 is the first part of NASA's plan to get us back to the moon, and then some. But not unlike many other space ventures, there are some hiccups going on. In this case, it has to do with its launch date. It was supposed to be for April, but now that's not possible. This mission will send an uncrewed Orion spacecraft around the moon using a huge space launch system, SLS Mega Rocket, agency officials said on February 24th. They're going to aim for May now, but that's not a guarantee either. We continue to evaluate the May window, but we're also recognizing that there's a lot of work in front of us. Tom Whitmire, Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development at NASA headquarters in Washington said during a virtual news conference. Some of that work will involve analyzing data from the Artemis 1 wet dress rehearsal, a crucial test that will take the SLS Orion stack through many of the milestones it will hit on launch day. Liftoff excluded, of course. Like the launch, the wet dress rehearsal will take place on Pad 39B at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, KSC in Florida. SLS and Orion are scheduled to roll out to the pad from KSC's Cavernous Vehicle Assembly Building, VAB, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2300 General Mountain Time, on March 17th, agency officials announced. It'll likely take about 12 hours for the huge vehicle to make the relatively short trek to the pad. The SLS Orion stack will probably spend about a month on pad 39B, with roughly two weeks on either side of the wet dress rehearsal, agency officials said. The vehicle will then roll back to the VAB for further analysis and processing. The May launch window runs from the 7th through the 21st, Whitmire said. If Artemis 1 isn't ready to go by then, the next opportunity comes from June 6th through June 16th, and the next window after that runs from June 29th through July 12th. So probably not the uplifting start, pun intended, that you were hoping for. But that doesn't mean this thing is a bust. Far from it. It just means that they're taking their time to get it done right. Launch windows. If you're not familiar with how these things work, there is a reason that these windows for launch exist and why they're so specific in terms of dates. Among other factors, performance constraints on the SLS, the need to line the launch up properly with Earth's rotation and the position of the moon, and the fact that the solar-powered Orion isn't designed to fly through eclipses that last longer than 90 minutes. Artemis 1 is a huge mission for NASA and its Artemis program of crewed lunar exploration. So the agency is taking its time to make sure everything is in order before it lifts off. Artemis 1 will make the first ever flight of the huge and powerful SLS and the second mission for Orion, which flew to the Earth's orbit atop a United Launch Alliance Delta IV heavy rocket in December 2014. If all goes well during the roughly 26 days of Artemis 1, NASA will start gearing up for Artemis 2, which will send astronauts on a journey around the moon. That landmark flight, NASA's first crewed mission beyond Earth orbit since the Apollo era, is tentatively scheduled for 2024. Artemis 3 will put astronauts on the moon in 2025 or thereabouts, using a SpaceX Starship vehicle if all goes according to plan. And that lunar touchdown isn't the Artemis endpoint. The program aims to establish a long-term sustainable human presence on and around the moon. The lessons and skills gained from doing so will aid NASA's next giant leap, putting astronauts on Mars, which the agency aims to do in the 2030s. A big goal and one that is pushing NASA to do this bigger and better than ever before. The Artemis Program As we've noted, the Artemis Program is the spearhead of NASA getting back to the moon, but they're hoping to make more history than just that. With Artemis missions, NASA will land the first woman and first person of color on the moon, using innovative technologies to explore more of the lunar surface than ever before. We will collaborate with commercial and international partners and establish the first long-term presence on the moon. Then, we will use what we learn on and around the moon to take the next giant leap, sending the first astronauts to Mars. As to why NASA is dead set on the moon? 
We're going back to the moon for scientific discovery, economic benefits, and inspiration for a new generation of explorers, the Artemis generation. While maintaining American leadership and exploration, we will build a global alliance and explore deep space for the benefit of all. It's not hard to get swept up in that desire to return to the moon and make it a place where we can live. And they might actually have helped beyond SpaceX in trying to make it happen. Blue Origin. Yep, Jeff Bezos is here, and he not only is behind this idea of putting us on the moon permanently, he feels we need to get this done yesterday. Our choice. One of Bezos' plans he laid stated, stasis and rationing or dynamism and growth. Clearly, he is a guy who feels we should go and be dynamic and grow the Earth. He even laid out his plan in part by noting that we need self-sustaining colonies in key places in the universe to act as a sort of relief to the population on Earth. An interesting notion, and ironic that he would consider things like relief for the planet when he can't even let his Amazon workers take a bathroom break. Bezos feels that humanity has a lot to get from the moon itself. Not to mention, he feels it'd be better and cheaper to try and launch a colony mission there versus one to Mars. And technically, he's right. The problem for a moon colony mission has always been whether we could work with the limited survival resources there. But for Bezos and others, they're looking at the more financial reasoning to go there. Because what the moon lacks in atmosphere and water, it makes up for in cobalt, gold, helium, iron, palladium, platinum, tungsten, and other resources. More than enough to fund multiple colonies, wouldn't you say? And through Blue Origin, Bezos is making lunar craft and landers to help ensure that humanity can land and traverse the moon without much issue. To the moon, to the moon. Let's ask the obvious question here. Are we really going to make it to the moon? Well, once upon a time, people said that was impossible. And NASA proved them wrong many times over. And through the help of those like Elon Musk, we've got our desire to get back into space and continue the dreams of settling amongst the stars. Will it be hard? Of course. Artemis 1 is already proof of that as it is struggling just to get off the ground. But that doesn't mean that the whole thing is going to be a bust sooner or later. That's why they're doing the Artemis mission in multiple stages. First the craft, then the people on the craft, then the people on the craft landing on the moon. These steps matter. And for all we know, by the time we get to Artemis 3, we'll have gotten something that could further help the mission as a whole. It's not hard to look up at the sky and see the moon and wonder whether we'll ever reach it. But the fact of the matter is, we're closer now to colonizing it than we've ever been. And that's more than enough to keep people pushing forwards towards this dream. So, what do you think? What do you think of this look at the Artemis 1 program and how NASA is really aiming for us not to just get back to the moon, but stay there? Do you hope to live on the moon one day? Do you feel if NASA does that, this is the first step in multiple big things that could happen? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel.